Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about my dot files and the changes that I've made and I'm going to try to go over every single one of the changes because, well, it's important, I guess. Now the first thing is the settings are completely and utterly redone. About time on this. The only thing that's left that I don't think I've changed is the username and changing the profile picture. There's now an entire dedicated section to fonts, and it's pretty extensive. And when you go all the way down, you can actually override the natural font rendering, which is pretty cool. So fonts, hopefully to you, seem a lot cleaner and clearer than they did before. Next is themes and colors was nearing 5,000 lines of code. So, well, what I've done essentially with this is, wait, that's not even open. Let me open this up real quick. When I right click this, you would have, have saw in the in the past that uh, the workspaces were like this. I had in my old dot files the ability to minimize that. So I took that concept and I applied it to here. So now we have sub tabs handled a lot differently. They're their own QML files and it takes everything from in here and it splits it up into things like this. So even this has been completely and utterly redone and handled differently. So you can pretty much customize things the way that you want. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm still working on it for the most part, but there you go. Then we split up appearance, components, system settings and stuff right in here and displays right here. And then I took Hyperlint theme stuff and I put it right over here. I'm going to integrate more into this and it should hopefully end up looking pretty good. I've also completely redone wallpaper by adding a gallery. And uh, I believe if I click this button, it should scale properly. This is what it's supposed to look like. Again, it's all still work in progress, but yeah, it looks good so far and it works well so far. Now, the dock hasn't really had any changes because, again, you don't fix what's not broken. But, again, unlike other dock files, my dock actually has the ability to utilize widgets. And as you can see, here's the widgets that I use. And then, top bar has not changed at all either. Widgets are still the same. Is that thing still on? Good, it is. And desktop widgets have had an overhaul. So when I click this, you notice that you're able to add widgets very gracefully. And each widget has the ability to go on an individual display because, again, the one that I had originally was not working. And yeah, and the best part is, thank you, uh, Dank Dash, for this idea. You can now resize them and move them around anywhere you want. But the big difference is they will be forced to obey the dock just like that. Okay. So you could pretty much move these anywhere you want. All right, let's head back here, shall we? And if we move on to positioning, nothing's changed here. Launcher, nothing's changed here. Uh, I need to set these back to where they're supposed to be because yes, there we go, that's fixed. Uh, default apps hasn't changed either. It's still what it needs to be. And if that's incorrect, we are actually supposed to be using I'm going to need to set this up as a button, aren't I? That's the one problem that I have with uh, dealing with a resizable window is that it's really, really difficult to make sure that the drop down menus appear outside of this. So I'm thinking maybe I will turn the drop downs into buttons just like I did here. So now your refresh rate is a button as well as all the way at the bottom, you're going to notice well, okay, if I click this monitor and I go all the way down, it's now, VRR is now a button instead of a drop down because it just made sense. So maybe I'll do the same thing. As for sound, uh, this actually now works, which is really, really nice. So if I open up something like Cider over here, and I'm actually gonna mute this, and if I hit play on this Avril Lavigne wannabe, you can see it says cider. Now I pulled this from my old dot files 
and integrated it in here because at one point I had a sidebar with a whole section on audio. Uh, it was really, really detailed and it worked out really, really well. But I also took this and I turned it into a widget and I'll show you that in a second. Um, other than that, I think that's covering all the changes to settings. But I do still want to show you that nifty little widget that I made for um, the volume mixer. And of course that happens. That's been happening a lot lately since I've updated. But uh, there you go. Look at that. And again, we exit and I hit play. There's cider. Now, of course, it still needs a little bit of work, but it does function like it's supposed to, and that's pretty damn good with me. All right, other things that I've done is that this, the menu will now follow where you click on the widget. So it's just basic positioning. And as well as I fixed this, basic positioning, and uh, not you, go away, but you. There we go. So now it's it's just better. Uh, it took a long time to do this, a long time to learn how to do this, to shaping things up. And as I said, that's just happening more and more lately, no matter how hard I push this. And it seems to just be some weird issue with Quickshell doing something. Because I've had it on other people's dot files as well. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video. And uh, if you want this, uh, check in the description below. You'll find a YouTuber named Finley. I'm uploading builds on his Discord because uh, it's a lot easier to deal with. The people there are super nice and, I don't know, they test it and report it issues. So it just seems like a good idea. It will be in the Dark Material Shell channel. Bye, everybody.